Hello church, I'm Drew Shelley, one of the pastors here at First United Methodist Church of Murfreesboro. I want to welcome you to worship by God's grace and through the Holy Spirit. We are able to be connected across space and time in the most wonderful way. It is always our prayer that you would encounter the risen Jesus in a very real way as we worship God together. Please let us know that you've worshiped today either by registering your attendance at the church website or by making a comment in the live feed. If you're interested in learning more about all that God is doing in and around this church family, just reach out uh, to us via email, phone, or a visit to the church office. We have pastors, staff, and wonderful disciples in action ready to be on the journey of faith with you. Our mission is to grow disciples of Jesus Christ who know Him, love Him, and serve Him for the transformation of Murfreesboro and the world. If that rings true in your heart, let's roll up our sleeves and work together. Now, let us worship the living God. Good morning. Welcome to worship at First United Methodist Church. We're so thankful to have those of you here in person and those of you online. You're all welcome here. We've been praying for you this week, and now we are blessed to have this time to worship together. Let us worship our God.
Hail the day that sees him rise to his throne above the skies. Christ, a while the Lord was given, reascends his native heaven. See, he lifts his hands above. See, he shows the prince of love. Hark, his gracious lips bestow blessings on his church below. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. On this Ascension Sunday, we rejoice in knowing that, as author and late worship scholar Lawrence Stuckey writes, the Ascension first affirms that what God begins, God completes. The same Word of God that came from God to dwell among us returns to God. Now, even though the writer of Acts clearly states that Jesus returned to the heavens, the hymn writer of our opening hymn also declared that the Lord is never far away. I can't think of any way of expressing in the midst of this paradox anything better than praise be to God. Let us sing. Please be seated. Good morning. I'm Juliana Coughlin. For those of you who may not know me, I am one of the student ministers here at First Church. Uh, and I'm so glad to be with you all this morning. Uh, first things first, 
we have some work to talk about, the work of the church. Um, we want to know that you're with us in worship this morning. So you can let us know that you joined us in a couple of different ways. There's an attendance card in your bulletin that you can fill out and place in the offering plate. Um, or you can let us know through our app or online, especially if you are joining us online this morning. If you're a first time visitor, uh, we wanna give you a special hello and welcome. So please come see us at the welcome desk out in the narthex. Uh, after the service, we would love to give you a gift. Uh, who doesn't love a gift, right? Uh, in your bulletin, you'll also notice another pamphlet. This is our up and coming. So if you're wondering what the church is up to, you can find it all right. A couple of things that I wanna point out in particular. Um, first, we need some volunteers for a couple of different things. The first being Project Transformation. This is um, a group that we've been involved with for a very long time, especially through our pastor, uh, Sally Millsap. Uh, this is a great summer opportunity for kids in need um, that they can get some reading in, uh, get some fellowship over the summer with our lovely volunteers. So they're desperately in need of some volunteer readers um, from June 6th through the 9th. So you can look in your up and coming and find out how you can get plugged in as a volunteer there. We also still need some volunteers for our Vacation Bible School that'll be here at the church from June 20th through the 24th. Uh, if you can serve the whole week, awesome. If it's for one day, we'll take you up on it. If it's even for an hour, don't worry, we will put you to work. Uh, so reach out to Andrew Gilmore and he will get you plugged in um, in a way that is best fitting for these kids. We also have an exciting fellowship opportunity coming up for our women's ministry. Uh, this is an opportunity for live music, fellowship, just some good time with one another at Arrington Vineyards on June 10th from 5 to 8 p.m. Um, come one, come all, come join us, and we'd love to spend some time with you. When I hear of Jesus' ascension, I can't help but look forward a, a little bit and connect this with the vision of a new heaven and a new earth as revealed in the revelation to John. Our hope lies in Jesus' return and the image of a river flowing from the throne of God is a message of peace, justice, and unity. So this morning as we sing our next hymn, may we sing with a spirit of hope-filled anticipation. Children, you know the drill by now. During the fourth and final stanza of this hymn, we invite you to come forward. This morning, you're going to have a message with uh, Ms. Juliana this morning. So we're delighted to have her with us. And Juliana, thank you so much for being with us today. Now I invite you to rise as we join our voices in singing this simple, beautiful, and hopeful hymn.
Good morning, guys. Hi. I have to ask, are you a dancer? Do you dance? You're right here with the bun. That looks like a, that looks like a really good ballerina bun. That's a good one. Yep. Okay, guys, I have a big question for you this morning, okay? Feel free to use all this space. Can you show me how you would fly into the sky if you could? Can you show me that? No, we're not flying this morning. If you could be like a superhero and fly into the sky, how would you do it? Oh, you do? Okay. Well, I guess we're not flying today. We are staying grounded. We are one with the earth. Um, well, our story this morning is about how Jesus flew into the clouds, into the sky, okay? You may not have thought that he did that, but he did, all right? So this is called Ascension Sunday. Can you say that? Ascension? Ascension? You got it? Okay. Uh, so we talk about how Jesus rose into heaven after he was resurrected from death, okay? So we know the Easter story, right? He was raised from the tomb, and he showed everyone that he was alive. He had conquered death. Well, then he hung out with his people for about 40 days and taught them the whole time, okay? This is like 40 days of Jesus school, okay? And he taught them a bunch of stuff that they would need to know. One of his last lessons was that the Holy Spirit, have we heard of the Holy Spirit? Yeah, Father, Son, Holy Spirit? That the Holy Spirit would be with them very, very soon. And the Holy Spirit would give them power to talk about Jesus all over the land, okay? They would be traveling to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth, okay? Where would you travel to if you could? If you could go anywhere to the ends of the earth, where would you want to travel to? Oh my gosh, parents, you're in luck. They're not going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. They're not traveling. Florida, is that because Disney's in Florida? Yeah, called it. So they could even go to Disney if they wanted to, to talk about Jesus. Then a cloud appeared, right? And Jesus was raised up into the cloud out of sight. So even though Jesus was no longer with the people on earth, the promise that he gave them came true, and the Holy Spirit joined all the people. Okay, so the people were never really alone. They had Jesus, and they had the Holy Spirit. And that goes for us today. We still have the Holy Spirit with us today, okay? So Jesus went up, but he sent the Spirit to stay right here with us through all the years, all the good times and bad times. We're never alone as long as we have the Holy Spirit, okay? Can we remember that? All right, can you all say the Lord's Prayer with me? All right. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Thanks, guys. Father, 
Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. to point out a rosebud up here on the lectern. That is in honor of a newcomer to our church family, little Rosalie Peterson of Colin and Fallon. So that's a big uh, praise for all of us. And we also recognize our candle up here for those active in the military uh, and the families that support them. Let us now go to God in prayer. Lord, we come to you this morning from so many different places. Some of us bring hearts of celebration as we watch so many close to us graduate from high school and college, or as we celebrate new life. Some meet you this morning exhausted, watching online in our PJs because we needed some extra minutes of rest. Some meet you mentally already on summer break. And many of us meet you angry and saddened after a heavy week, especially for our brothers and sisters in Uvalde. As we lift up our unspoken prayer requests to you this morning and lift up those listed in our bulletin, let us direct our prayers specifically to those who have experienced so much tragedy, whether right here in Rutherford County during the Riverdale graduation as a young life was lost, or as we see on a greater scale in Buffalo and Uvalde. We lift up these names and the souls that you watch over, of Alexandria Rubio, Alethea Ramirez, Amory Jo Garza, Annabelle Guadalupe Rodriguez, Aliahana Cruz Torres, Ellie Garcia, Eva Morales, Irma Garcia, Jackie Cazares, Jayla Nicole Silguero, Jace Luevanos, Jose Flores, Leila Salazar, McKenna Lee Elrod, Mate Rodriguez, Miranda Mathis, Nevea Bravo, Rogelia Torres, Tess Marie Mata, Uzia Garcia, Xavier Lopez of Uvalde, along with the family of Salvador Ramos, who are also facing incredible grief and heartache, God. We lift up Roberta Drury, Marcus Morrison, Andre McNeil, Aaron Salter, Geraldine Talley, Celestine Cheney, Hayward Patterson, Catherine Massey, Pearl Young, Ruth Whitfield of Buffalo, and the survivors, Zaire Goodman, 
Jennifer Warrington, Christopher Braden, and of course within our own community, Hassani Brewer. As we remember and say these names, God, may we be reminded that they share the name you call each of us by, beloved. We lift up the families of each victim. God, we also lift up the families of the young people who face so much pain that they found themselves doing some really horrible things, God. We lift up their families as they also grieve with their communities. May they see that you are good and your heart breaks for what breaks ours. We lift up those who are simply trying to do their jobs, from educators to store clerks to first responders and our military friends and family. Those who have had to see unthinkable and unnecessary tragedy we lift up their families who will walk with them as they continue their work and process. God, when it can be tricky to be a good neighbor, let us turn to you to remind ourselves of how to care for one another, how to listen to one another, how to just be there for one another. We lift up those in positions of power, from school principals to local leaders to Congress, that they may put your people first and be stirred by the Holy Spirit to make decisions that protect our people. God, let us honor your creation before we honor our own. God, I pray that we take a moment away from the distractions to just sit with you, to rest in you and know that this is not the world you created for us. You called this world good and we have made it messy. May we find the humility to ask for your forgiveness so that we can take a step towards the beauty and the holy and the divine that you so graciously offer us. Our peace and wisdom is of you and you alone. Instill in us the compassion, mercy, patience, justice, accountability, and love that your Son, Jesus the Christ, shows us throughout your word. God, as we look at how to be a part of your kingdom, how to be a part of this community, may we honor you with our hearts, our spirits, and even our tithes and offerings this morning and every morning, that they be for you and the kingdom. In your son's name we pray. Amen. I would now like to invite up our ushers for our time of tithes and offerings. May God grant blessing to these offerings that we bring today in worship. Amen. Our anthem this morning is based on a spiritual that arises out of the African American experience. You'll notice and see and hear that the choir will be singing the words, Hold up the Baptist finger, hold up the Baptist hand when I get in the heavens. We're going to join the Baptist band. Now, since we're a Methodist church, I thought I would just offer some comment that regardless of our background or perspectives that we're Christians together with all Christian denominations and since a spiritual is a musical form that arose out of the struggle of those stripped of their rights and power, I'm not going to assume it's okay to change the word from Baptist to Methodist or something else. But we're going to sing this as indicated in this joyful and hope-filled spiritual.
this morning we uh, remember that this is Memorial Day weekend, um, where that does mean barbecues and family time for some. Uh, we also want to take some time to reflect on what this weekend really means. Um, I'm about to lead us in a Memorial Day prayer uh, written by Chris Lynn, and there will be some response parts. So after I say, oh God, I'd like you to say, we lift up thankful hearts. Okay, so, oh God, we lift up thankful hearts. Okay, I think we got it. All right. Almighty God, before whom stand the living and the dead, we are your children and give thanks to you, recognizing our own mortality. For all those through whom you have blessed our pilgrimage, whose lives that have empowered us, whose influence is a healing grace, O oh God, we lift up thankful hearts. For the dear friends and family members whose faces we see no more, but whose love is with us forever, O oh God, we lift up thankful hearts. For the teachers and companions of our childhood and youth, and for the members of our household of faith who worship you now on the other side of the veil, O oh God, we lift up thankful hearts. For those who sacrifice themselves, our brothers and sisters who have given their lives for the sake of others, O oh God, we lift up thankful hearts that we may hold them all in continual remembrance and ever think of them as with you in that city whose gates are not shut by day and where there is no night, O oh God, we lift up thankful hearts. May we now be dedicated to working for a world where fear is dispelled and we may be united, working alongside one another and living into the call to love our neighbor we thank you, O oh God, for all who have given their lives to serve and care for people around the world. We pray for those families and friends whose loved one did not come back alive, those whose loved one came back but struggled greatly to adjust after seeing war, and for those who came back to have lived full lives yet remember, especially on important days those that they have lost, including their own memories of war. May they experience peace, and may they know how loved they are and how grateful we are to them for their service. We lift all this up to you and pray this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Thank you, Juliana. Over in Modern Worship, uh, just a little while ago, uh, Laurie Richardson did our children's moment, and she had a balloon for Ascension Sunday, and let that balloon go, and it went up, you know, to the top of the ceiling in the Family Life Center. I, I was reminded, I did that same thing uh, when I was at another church doing the children's moment. I had a whole bunch of balloons that I turned loose, and they went up like that, and they, the only pro they got hung up in the return air vent in the back of the room, and they started whistling with the, when the air, and you couldn't hear the preacher when he got up to preach, so we had to stop worship, and you'd think somebody would just go get a ladder. That's not what, somebody went and got a BB gun, and we shot the balloons down so that we could have, you haven't lived until you've had worship in that environment. Great singing, good preaching, a wonderful children's moment, and a BB gun all at the same time. It was, it was something else. That was in a different place. I hadn't learned very much at that time. Some would say I still haven't learned very much. Now, let's pray together. Oh God, we thank you for this Ascension Sunday and for this Memorial Day. We gather in your house now to worship after what has been a very tough, tough week. We are hungry to hear your voice to hear from your word, to somehow be comforted and encouraged and directed. We pray for all of that now, that you would send your Holy Spirit to write on our hearts and minds your love, your call, your direction, 
Help us now. We know that you will. For we pray this in the name and power of your son Jesus. May the people of God say, Amen. We hear uh, our New Testament reading from the book of Acts, the first chapter. Now, Luke, who wrote Luke's gospel, also wrote the book of Acts. It's kind of his second volume as he tells his story. And so we hear that today, Acts chapter 1. Let us hear the word of God. In the first book, Theophilus, now I went to school for 30 years to be able to say that right. I'm going to say it again. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. When he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. And so we say, thanks be to God. This is Ascension Sunday, as we said, Ascension Sunday in the church. Around the world, Christian preachers will read this text and focus on many things, maybe the mystical part, maybe the practical part, maybe the Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria to the ends of the earth part, all kinds of things. I'm afraid that uh, I've heard this, I think, every single year for 41 years. Every time I hear it now, I just kind of Listen and smile and nod and gloss over whatever it is Luke is trying to tell us. I, I would like to hear it afresh today. Would you like to hear it afresh today? Let's, let's listen. Let's agree to listen with open ears to see what the Lord says to us through this story that we know so well. Here we have Jesus and the eleven standing on the Mount of Olives one last time. Jesus says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Jesus rises, a word of blessing, a cloud of promise, away he goes to sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Just that same day, Merle Haggard was playing at the Mount of Olives Bar and Grill just around the corner. So in the background, you could hear that song that we all know. You know the song that Merle Haggard would have sung at this event. Silver wings, sing it with me, shining in the sunlight, roaring engines headed somewhere tonight, carry you away, leaving me lonely. Silver wings slowly fading out of sight. That's what he's saying at the ascension. Not really. I just made that part up, but such a great song that fits with this story so well. The apostles, the apostles stand gazing into heaven. So often the church finds itself gazing into heaven, standing very still, hoping we can somehow take hold of Jesus' feet and snatch him back down here with us. There is a tension here with the disciples, with us, after 40 days of Jesus 
opening the scriptures and teaching the disciples, they still wonder like we do, how in the world is this thing going to work, Jesus? How is this going to work with you up here and us down here? They say, verse 6, Lord, is this the time? Is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? (laughs) Can you hear the fear behind their question? The fear that's there... They're starting to put all the pieces together, aren't they? They're starting to realize he actually is about to leave them. He's going to leave them. They're going to be here, and he'll be there. That's what's getting ready to happen. The wheels are turning. Okay, Jesus, we remember you did three years' worth of miracles, preached, taught, healed, cast out demons, set people free, forgave, ate with sinners and tax collectors. Okay, we get it. We're supposed to do all of that. But what about the fact that your own people, your own people arrested you, beat you, crucified you, put you in a tomb, broke our heart. We nearly died too. God then raised you from the dead, and now you've been with us 40 days, just 40 days, teaching, discipling, showing your scars, and breaking bread with us. Surely, surely, Lord, now is the time. Surely this is the place. Surely there has been enough suffering. Surely this is it. Surely this is it. Jesus says, no, no, people, no. It is not for you to know the times or periods the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power. You will receive power. Jesus breaks the news to them again. (laughs) The shape of God's kingdom is not what we expected. It is not. Jesus did not come to raise up a righteous army to overthrow and avenge all the wrongs done to his people. Jesus did not come to put us in places of power and wealth and luxury so we could sit and sing kumbaya until the final trumpet sounds and we all ride the first bus out of here. No, that is not why Jesus came. That is not the kingdom Jesus launched, though it is sometimes the kingdom that we would all prefer. Jesus brings... God's kingdom, the Jesus way of being. It is a way of being that brings the possibility of life and wholeness to all people. That cannot happen when one overthrows another, when the oppressed becomes the oppressor, when revenge and death and being right all the time are the driving forces behind what we do. That can't happen when God's people gaze into the air, silently wondering, waiting for Jesus to come back. No. The shape of the Jesus way differs from anything we've seen. It looks like forgiveness instead of revenge, reconciliation instead of hate, mercy instead of judgment, grace when we don't know what to do, bearing with instead of bailing out, love that expects nothing in return, clothes for the naked, food for the hungry, healing for the sick, compassion for the sinner, freedom for the addicted, sight for the blind, and a humility, a humility that puts us all on our faces at the foot of the cross of Christ. That is the kingdom of God from which and into which Jesus ascended even now. This Jesus way bubbles up in your hearts and mine. It becomes real as the Holy Spirit drives us with power to become witnesses, to be witnesses to the Jesus way, to share this gospel right here in Murfreesboro, in Tennessee, in America, in Guatemala, and even to the ends of the earth. That's what it does. That is our charge as Christ followers. In the Greek, it is so powerful. You will be my witnesses in every place between here and the ends of the earth you will be and the holy spirit will fill you with power and will drive you out to the ends of the earth for the sake of this work still we often gaze into heaven trying to remember trying so hard to remember what it is that God is doing in Jesus. It is so very hard to remember what God is doing in the face of the last two weeks. Ten people dead getting groceries. 
a shooting in a church not unlike this one. A new graduate of our own Riverdale High School killed in a gunfight, a fifth grader dead on the way home from school, and 19 19 little children, three adults shot to death at or near Robb Elementary School in Texas. What are we to think? What are we to think? What are we to say? What are we to do? Well, we pray, certainly. We pray. We know to pray. But what to pray? Maybe Romans 8, 26 comes to you as it does to me. The Holy Spirit groans for us with sighs that are too deep for words. That's all I've got right now. Sighs that are too deep for words. God knows. God knows that's where we are. What to think. What to think. We know God is with us. We know God weeps with us and all these people just like Jesus did at the grave of Lazarus. We know God's heart is broken. We know God did not desire any of this evil or tragedy. It is not and has not ever been part of God's plan for this stuff to happen. It is all a consequence of human brokenness. The very thing from which Jesus is actively saving the world. But it's just taken a long time, Jesus. It's taking too long, Jesus, too long. What do we say? What to say? I just want to say, Jesus, perhaps you went too quickly on your cloud. We need you to come right back. Dead need raised. Sick need healed. Broken need restored. Sins need forgiven. Reconciliation needs redoing over and over and over again. Jesus whispers to us from the Gospels. He whispers and says, hey, you will do even greater things than these. Even greater things than these. Oh, where do we start, Jesus? Help us to do those greater things. Where do we start? Too often we start and finish at the same place. God, do something about this mess. That's where we start. And finish. God, you do something about this. We get angry and indignant, and that's okay. God can handle our anger and indignance. But we sometimes fail to hear God's response to our shouting. It comes quietly in the voice of a weary parent, desperate for his children. To listen, we hear God say to us, I am trying to do something. But my beloved children, the agents through which I work, are too busy fighting with each other to understand how desperately the world needs their love, their presence, their hands and feet, their hearts. What am I doing right now? I am waiting on my people to become aware of the tragic cost of their distraction. Church, our world is a complicated mess. It is full of selfishness and sin and tragedy. We, the church, not just us, the whole church around the world, we have participated for far too long in building a society which is devouring its children, exhausting its parents, blaming its educators, breaking the backs of its elderly, and trying to monetize for profit every aspect of human life. Even we get tangled up with everybody else in the stupid fights that keep us at each other's throats so that we don't notice the evil sinking deeper and deeper into the fabric of our society. And that evil is not gay rights. It is not women's rights or guns rights. It is not the dreaded culture wars or even rock and roll music's great grandchildren. It's not any of that. It is just plain old selfishness. That's what it is. That little voice that whispers, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? That's the real evil. The old devil doesn't have to work very hard. Just whisper that at every turn. And we, even we, God's people, eventually lose our minds, our hearts, our true identity as God's beloved children. Pretty soon, people all around us are suffering, and we don't even notice. We can't even care. The truth is, the way I read this book, every human being in this world 
ought to be so loved and so known by the people of God that when so much as a tear falls from their eye, we are there to catch it in the name of Jesus with grace, hope, and encouragement toward a better way. I fear we are not doing that. We are not. We are too busy fighting or working or climbing or dealing with self-inflicted apathy caused by inattention to our spiritual lives This stuff that we're watching and seeing and trying to process, it is so massively complicated. I understand the desire to just throw our hands up in despair and take shots at each other on Facebook so we can at least feel like we're doing something. But that's not who we are. That is not who we are as followers of the way. Jesus, the one who has ascended, the one who sends power in the Spirit, the one who is coming back, Jesus commands us with his life and his words to be present in this world, to be present, especially in the places of deepest pain, sin, and struggle. We are supposed to be loving the hell out of the world in the name and power of Jesus. That's what we're supposed to be doing. You folks can do that. I have seen you do it. You've done it with me. You've done it with each other. You know how to do this. The truth is you you and I walk around with the deepest solution to the problem of human brokenness and suffering in our hearts and hands every day, we must not say that we don't know what to do. We do know what to do. I don't pretend to know how we clean up the mess, what to put back in its place. I have no idea how to legislate a way of life that, that... notices, cares for, and actually does something meaningful about all the hurting people around us who hurt other people. I don't know how to do that, but I do know this. If you and I will live the Jesus way, God will be at work and we'll start getting somewhere. So I would just ask, I would just ask this, would you, would you be truly present truly pleasant, present in all the places where you are, not on your phone, not distracted, not apathetic? Would you notice people? Would you smile at them, talk to them, genuinely care for them? Would you just love the hell out of somebody today and then be vulnerable and let them love the hell out of you too? We all need it together. We all need it together. Do it in the name and power of Jesus and realize The old devil will have to then remember he's already been defeated when you are on the move in the Jesus way. I know God will rise again. God will raise life out of all this death and the Jesus way will spread. That's what Jesus said. That's how he said it would work. Though it is hard to see that it's working right now, I am choosing to put my faith and hope in what Jesus said. We grieve all of this brokenness, but we do not grieve as those with no hope. Jesus promised power in the midst of our despair. Receive that power now so that you can live our hope in Jesus The world's healing hangs here in this sending moment. You are the sent people of God who know something that will make a difference. Go do it. Go do it. Go do it. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'd invite you to rise as you're able and let's sing on Jordan's stormy banks I stand. As we sing this, Juliana and I will be down here at the prayer rail. If any would have need of prayer, just come and let us know. If you're here with these big questions, I I can't tell you we have all the answers, but we know the one who does. And we know that we find life in following Jesus and would love to share that with you as we go from this place. Let's stand and worship the Lord.
Sisters and brothers, thank you so much for having been here in this place today. It has been a gift to be in worship on this Memorial Day weekend and on this Ascension Sunday. We carry with us a very important message, not just a message, but a way of life that we can share with the world, that we must, we must share with the world. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may live in hope now and forever. Amen. Thank you for having been in worship today. Your presence has been a gift. If this was your first time, please let us know so that we can connect and get to know each other better. If you have questions, ideas, or just want to know more, don't hesitate to call or email. Phone numbers and links are listed below, or you can visit us at fumcm.org. If you have questions about what it means to follow Jesus, to put your faith in Jesus, or if you're just struggling with those deep questions of life that we all share, Please know that this is a safe space to explore those things. Just let us know. In the meantime, you're in our prayers. We love you very much, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.